17, it's always busy. This is like the least busy it is right now. So here we have the Santa Cruz Mountains connecting over to the Sierra Azul. We have the town of Los Gatos in San Jose. You can see how urbanization is encroaching upon the mountains and how Highway 17 has really fragmented the mountain range. All these dots symbolize different animals that have been hit. With the drought, the current drought, the reservoir is almost completely dried up. So now it's crucial for animals to be able to cross the highway to access water at Lexington. So here we are at the Lexington Reservoir culvert, the type of culverts that wildlife will use. Most important thing, it's really big. Second important thing, you can see straight through it. Animals tend to need to see straight through it and see that the light literally at the end of the tunnel to navigate. And we have gotten deer tracks here before. However, we haven't captured them on our cameras yet. So that is kind of a concern for us because we haven't seen them. So that either means they're just coming up to here and then turning back or that very rarely they're crossing through here. These are different mid-pen preserves in Santa Clara County Parks. So it's really exciting because animals are both mountain lions, deer, foxes, we know are in these preserves. So, but we have Highway 17 bisecting them. So now we're looking at how can we connect these preserves along the highway. These are hot spots where animals are trying to cross the highway but continually being hit. So this lets us know where would we need a wildlife crossing structure. These red stars here are mountain lions. Right now it's so nice and cool. Totally quiet. You would not think you're right now we're under four lanes of traffic. And check the camera. We're getting a lot of movement and how we know that we're getting movement along here is we first started by putting up cameras and seeing what was moving. We're getting uh, bobcats, uh, gray fox, red fox, skunks and raccoons, all the smaller species. We have an SD card in here and this has all of our data on it. All right, here we go. So we've put the card in. Here's the real fun part is going through the data and seeing what wildlife species so far we have Homo sapien, the domestic dog. Here's a skunk. Here we have a skunk that used the culvert. So that's a big deal. But this will facilitate smaller animals. So even though we're looking for mountain lions and deer, it's important that we're seeing these smaller species also using the culvert. Great. So we have a gray fox that went through the culvert. That's excellent. That's a very important native species. When I was going to UC Santa Cruz, I had been commuting on Highway 17 from Cupertino. And I saw how many animals were hit on Highway 17. It was a real problem. As I was studying conservation biology and wildlife ecology, I was also learning the impacts of habitat fragmentation. And this often comes in the form of roads. But one night when it really hit home is I was coming back from the gym and I saw a mountain lion hit on the highway and it was sitting there. So I drove, turned around, came back, and at that point it was laying down. So people have been calling, and the sheriff and the cops showed up, and you know they were had their guns out. So I said, you know, wait, wait, you know, this could be a, a UC Santa Cruz puma, um, one of their study animals. So we waited for the warden to come up, but unfortunately it had been hit so badly that they just had to kill the mountain lion on site. So I stood there and listened to it get shot, and. It was heartbreaking, but it just really showed the need for wildlife corridors. The more fragmented the landscape becomes, the more you see certain key behaviors starting to drop out. So at a certain level of fragmentation, you might still see mountain lions moving around in there, and they might still be um, feeding on deer, but they'll stop communicating with each other, and they'll stop having den sites. And those are the two crucial behaviors that we want to maintain because those lead to reproduction and ultimately more lions. This was an older male. So I talked to Chris Wilmers about this. You know, who, who was that? So it was an older male that he felt was pushed out by a younger male. 
And that's the thing with mountain lions, why you need space and big space and for them to be able to travel. Mountain lions are very territorial, especially the males. And even for juveniles, they'll attack a juvenile. So an older male can be pushed out. So this was an older male that had been probably pushed out. Paul Beyer, he's one of our leading mountain lion experts in California. He did some amazing work which showed you need one immigrant immigrating into a population to bring... Or going out. Or going out. To bring that genetic diversity and thanks to Chris Wilmers and his team at the UC Santa Cruz Puma Project, they have found that the Santa Cruz mountain lions actually have low genetic diversity. So we're already on a dangerous track. Animals need to be able to find viable mates. So that means we need new immigrants coming into a population. Populations need a high genetic diversity to fight off things like disease, inbreeding. When one individual gets a disease, it's easier to spread on to the next one because they're so closely related. Yes, you don't have different individuals that have different resistance to these diseases, so that's why it's really important to have a genetic diversity. Get that gene flow. This is Trout Creek, which is going along this ravine, which leads to Lexington Reservoir. Animals are naturally just traveling along this ravine to access the water source at Lexington Reservoir. So we know this is where animals are attempting to cross. So this is where we hope to build a culvert, a wildlife crossing structure. We're on the west side of Trout Creek culverts, and this is at the ravine where many animals are traveling, and this is where several mountain lions have been hit. Uh, species such as deer, raccoon, skunk, they're having a harder time navigating through that culvert. It's dark, it takes a turn, it's not fun to cross, and our data shows that the only thing that's really potentially used it is a raccoon. So, so for mountain lions to successfully cross Heavy 17, we need a big culvert that they can see through that. We've been working with Caltrans to even develop cost. So this project would be about $3 million to implement. And once you get a culvert like this installed with directional fencing, it's really exciting that such a simple solution can, can last lifetimes and prevent so many animal vehicle collisions and keep our animal populations healthy. The exciting thing for me about this project that it's about wildlife connectivity and it's connecting people. We have so many amazing partners on this project. We have Post, Midpen, the Land Trust of Santa Cruz. Caltrans is working with us. We're working with the Department of Fish and Wildlife and looking at the data, Santa Clara County Parks. And we've had a wonderful partner, UC Santa Cruz, the Puma Project team, Chris Swimmers, has collaborated, given all their data so we can look at the data analysis and see where the culvert needs to go. This could be a beautiful case study for Northern California that we could replicate and work with other partners to show that you know we, we can have these wonderful preserves, but how do you connect them when you have major freeways? Because that's an issue for the whole Bay Area.